Okay, let's get this open and take a look at the LSI SAS card and see exactly how hot it really is. This has been running for probably at least four days constant. It's all the way up top here. Yeah, that's pretty freaking hot. Hundred and fifty degrees easily. Yeah, come on, there you go. Yeah, hundred and fifty degrees up there. Hey, there's a fan there. Hundred and thirty six on the top of the board. That is definitely unacceptable. I think it's time to do some uh thermal surgery on this card. Let's shut down the server, take it down to the bench, and get some work done. Okay, now let's get the card out of the computer. And you can see it's a regular LSI SAS 9207 8 internal card. And the reason why it's running so hot in my desktop, as you can see, it's a very small heatsink. And this thing has a thermal TDP of like 10 to 15 watts or so. So this is not a lot of heatsink to dissipate passively 10 to 15 watts. The reason why this works perfectly fine is this is a server card. It's meant to go into servers, into rack servers, which usually have, at least somewhere in the middle of the server case, a big rack of fans that are blowing a ton of air over all the cards and all the hard drives and everything else to keep them nice and cool. And that's how this actually works perfectly fine. But in a desktop environment, we don't have that type of air flowing over it. So we need to supplement it a little bit. So what we're gonna do, is first we're going to pop off these two pins and these are metal ones so you got to crimp them a little bit make sure you don't hit any of the surface mount devices and we're going to go ahead and re-thermal paste this because i don't know how old this card is and i have a little bit of this left over the cryo knot you don't have to use this you can use pretty much anything it'll probably be better than what's originally on here from the factory i just happen to have just a hair bit left and it should be enough for this job so we're going to go ahead and do that first and then we'll get to adding a fan on this okay so we gotta be gentle about this not too bad actually just a little bit of squeeze and they start feeding down so let me show this one a little bit of a squeeze And yeah, they go right through. So now the pins are not coming out perfectly. You gotta be careful because there's a spring on these. Okay, that feels like it's fully released. There we go. Now, now they're released, but they're still held on by the uh, heat sink itself. So I believe what they've used here, because there's a very this one actually just has a direct die, so we got to be careful about it. We're going to twist it sideways a little bit here and there. I think they used a thermal epoxy on it. So we want to slowly... Yeah, okay. She's starting to twist. Okay, they actually used some half-decent stuff on here. It's not an epoxy per se. I can draw on it, but it's really hard and old and yeah, let me clean this up and we'll be back. Okay, so since we have it all cleaned up now, let's go ahead and put some thermal paste on here, which has to be better than what was originally on there. That should be more than enough. And do my best to spread it out on this die. In case I want to reuse them. Now the fan we're going to use for this is... Where the heck did I put it? Right here. I'm using a Noctua NF A4 times 10, which means it's a 10 millimeter fan. Little rinky dink thing. So let's go ahead and play with that here for a second once I figure out how to open the box.
Let's zoom out of here just a little bit so you can see what you see what I'm doing. Okay, so here's the fan itself. Nice little 40 millimeter fan by 10 millimeter with a three pin connector. So yeah, Noctua, Noctua, Noctua. They've got these crazy funky looking pins here, which I don't know if that's gonna work for me or not. No, I don't think I don't think that way is gonna work. So let's see here. Actually, the holes fit up perfectly. And the question is, do I have nylon screws long enough for that to go through everything? Wrong spot. Okay, that's as far as deep as that goes. And that goes right through there. Ooh, that might just make it actually. And then put like one or two nuts on the back here. And this will keep it from shorting out on anything. So I think I'm going to give this a shot. And get out two nuts per side. Okay, now before I put this together, what is the fan orientation? Actually, when it goes in here, I want it facing that way. So yeah, that's perfectly fine. And which way are we blowing? And we are blowing this way, so I want to blow in. I want a push configuration. So let's put this right here like this. And I really hate when that happens. Let's get these out of the way. Bring this back on over here. And let's see if we can put this on without making too much of a mess. And they're just slightly too short. Really. Oh wait, no. It, I might be able to get... Mm, this is going to be really tight. Don't know. I think I got a hold of that one. Let's try this side. Okay. Let's see if we can gently tighten these down. Everything wants to make noise today. There goes my grandmother clock. Although I can't silence that. That is nice and tight. So yeah, we got the two nylon nuts right there, and they're literally just flush. So they, they have enough thread that they're gripping, and yeah, that is not going anywhere. That's perfect. So let's go ahead and put this back into the computer, get the computer turned on, and let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes, and let it just heat soak, and see where it sits at after that point. Okay, so we got the card back in, and it's been running for about 10, a little bit more than 10 minutes or so. And it should have warmed up by now. So let's see what we got. And looks like 82.5 was the highest I got off that. Let's check the top of the board. Okay, the highest I got off of that was 87.5. That is so much better. And all you did was put a little 40 millimeter by 10 millimeter fan. And now this card won't have any throttling issues when we start doing a lot of work with it. Everything's plugged in. And this thing's very quiet. I can't even really hear it over the rest of the fans I have going on in here. Um, one mention of caution though, make sure you plug this into a four pin header on your motherboard and have your hardware monitoring in case the fan ever goes bad. And don't cheap out on these fans, the cheap uh, 40 millimeter fans. They are definitely known to go bad really quick. Uh, get a quality one. It doesn't have to be a Noctua, but get a quality 40 millimeter fan. This way you get years worth of service out of it without having to worry about it. So if you like this video, thumbs up, please. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. And I'll see you next video.